The A330 electrical system is quite similar to electrical systems which you are already familiar with. It is simply more automatic and easier to use. There are two engine driven generators. The generators maintain a constant speed by a drive mechanism known as an integrated drive generator. IDG. Each generator supplies alternating current AC to its own bus. Generator 1 to AC bus 1, generator 2 to AC bus 2. Each AC bus supplies its own transformer rectifier, TR. AC bus 1 to TR1. AC bus 2 to TR2. The TR convert alternating current into direct current, DC, to supply their associated DC buses, DC1 and DC2. DC bus 1 then feeds the DC BAT bus. The DC BAT bus can charge the batteries or receive power from the batteries as required. The electrical system also includes two essential buses. The first one is the AC essential bus fed by AC bus 1. The second one is the DC essential bus, fed by the AC1 bus, via the essential transformer rectifier. This is the basic electrical system. We will now introduce some other components which supply the basic system. The electrical network can also be supplied by the APU generator. These three generators are all identical and any one of them can supply the entire aircraft electrical needs. On the ground, the aircraft can be supplied by one or two external power sources. As a backup, there is an hydraulically driven emergency electrical generator, Emergen. It is powered by the green hydraulic system. The green system can be supplied by a ram air turbine, RAT, which extends in case of severe hydraulic failures. The RAT is located under the right wing. A static inverter allows part of the AC electrical network to be supplied from the main batteries, batteries 1 and 2. The APU TR is used to charge the APU battery. The APU battery is dedicated to starting the APU.
Now let's see how this information is presented to the pilots in the cockpit. We will introduce the ECAM electrical pages. There are two ECAM electrical pages, one for the AC distribution and one for the DC distribution. Usually only one ECAM electrical page can be displayed at a time on the lower ECAM. For training purposes, we will show both at the same time. You can see that all the components we have talked about are displayed on the ECAM pages. Notice that each component has a title to aid identification. Generator 1 and Generator 2 supplying AC bus 1 and AC bus 2. TR1 and TR2 supplying DC bus 1 and DC bus 2. Two essential buses supplied by the left side. the DC BAT bus and two batteries. The APU TR, the DC APU and the APU battery. For simplification, the component indications had been removed. Let's now present them. As shown, each component can be monitored via its indications. These indications are voltage, current or load for the generators, frequency and IDG temperature. You can also notice the various connections represented by green lines. Let's now locate the controls available to the pilots and associate them with the components displayed on the ECAM. The electrical panel is located on the overhead panel. For emergency cases, there is an emergency electrical power panel on the left side of the overhead panel. Now let's look at the relationship between the electrical panel and the ECAM electrical pages. The battery voltage can be monitored either on the overhead panel using the battery voltage selector or the electrical DC page. Each battery is controlled by a push button switch. Both main generators and the APU generator are controlled by their associated push button switch. The external power sources are also controlled by a push-button switch. We will learn how to use them in the normal operation modules. The AC Essential Feed push-button switch enables the pilots to change the feed for the AC Essential bus from AC bus 1 
to AC bus 2. The bus tie push button switch enables the pilots to isolate one side of the system from the other. You will see and do this in the abnormal operation modules. In case of failure, these push button switches enable you to disconnect the related IDG from its drive shaft. Caution! If the push button is pressed for more than about three seconds, Damage may occur to the disconnection mechanism. The emergency generator test switch is used by maintenance only to test the emergency generator.